Okay, before we get into the actual build, we're gonna quick run through some best practices when you're going on an end-to-end -end build and how do you name everything, right? We're gonna be using task flows to set us up for success so that this environment becomes something that we can manage. My name is Chris Wagner. Welcome to Kratos BI. Excited to have you here in this end-to-end -end video series. We're gonna be going deep into building this stuff out. Let's head over to it. Okay, so in our last video, we built out this task flow where we're going from uh, our getting data to landing data, transforming data to our data mart, which is just storage, to our semantic model, and then reports. Nice thing about task flows, it allows us to add in these great comments. So we're gonna like hone in on on what are the these big comments that we want you know people to be able to like see and use as architects, as designers, as managers, right? So the first thing we have in our get source data, we're gonna be talking about, you know, this is where we get source data into the environment. This is gonna have no transformations, right? The idea is we want this to be as quick and easy on any source system so we can load that data in without causing any problems. That means we might have many different you know, processes that are loading data in so it's really lightweight and we're able to go and access data and bring it into the environment. So when we do that, when, whenever we have to create one of these, we're gonna follow a common naming convention inside of environment so it's easy for us to find these things. So we're gonna start with a get data so we understand we're going out and we're getting data from the source system. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a transformation the naming convention of the pipeline is what we're talking about here, is it's gonna be like, what is that source? So example, and you know, we kind of describe that right here, right, is, you know, that's what we're doing it for. And then the example that we're gonna be doing in our first build out is a get data from the AdventureWorks, right? So that's, it's gonna be one big bulk pull. So I know that's what's gonna be done first. So I wanna give this direction to the developer who's gonna be doing it and so that they just can follow along with this, okay? Next one, we're gonna be landing data and our landing data is gonna be going into one space, right? The land data is going to go into the environment with no transformations. That was what was from the source going into this. Uh, and it's gonna always be a lake house, right? It's gonna land that data in. And I'm even gonna give the name of the data here. Now we will be attaching this and this one is gonna like stay consistent, right? Like it's gonna just be my land data space in this environment, okay? There's not gonna be anything else that's in there. So we're just gonna land that data, all right? Note, maintain. we wanna maintain as few data stores as possible to reduce duplication of data and processing, right? So again, we're just loading this in, no transformations, just going into the landed space. Okay, next item, transform data. Let's look at that guy, all right? So we wanna transform the data into the environment. And now this is, we're gonna to start to change some of this stuff up. So naming conventions could be transform data so we understand when we're looking at a pipeline we're looking at notebooks or whatever the item is it's gonna be the transform data and then we're gonna include a description of what it's being transformed or targeted to right so it's not from which is what we had in our original pipelines and, and items it's going to be going to something okay so this is going to be your your dim customer or your dim whatever it happened you know maybe a fact table or whatever it is that you're loading it into that's what you're going to name this on so like it's easy for you to find out like hey i've got a problem with my customer table you can go in and easily find the you know the the objects that are loading and managing the customer table right now there'll be dependencies we'll need lineage and all that good stuff that's a different challenge uh, but we naming conventions this is how we, we manage that okay next item is our data marts again on initial builds, it's important to know what we're using for our data mart naming convention. We're gonna have as few of these as possible. Ideally, you have one data mart uh, inside of your environment. This could also be a data warehouse. If you go into the Kimball methodology, um, uh, you have an enterprise data warehouse, which is a big conglomerate of information uh, that's brought together by the enterprise. Uh, different departments or teams might have a data mart, which is a subset of the data that is that comes from that, that data warehouse or comes from different sources, but just being managed by the team. 
this is not a technology choice, right? So we're gonna be getting into why we might choose a different piece of technology in the future. So this is not necessarily a Power BI Data Mart. This is what, you know, what that storage layer is. The idea being that this is business ready data for semantic model or reporting, okay? And then I've got the name of it here. I screwed that up, but we'll, it's all right. We can keep going. It's my end-to-end -end data mart. So I'm gonna be using the name of my domain for that. And in this case, it's just a test, but you can very well call this your finance data mart or your sales data mart or HR data mart. And while some people like to drop that, uh, that last piece of the naming convention or call it DW or a lake house or whatever it is, uh, I like to kind of take a step up. I like to include that in because if you just say sales, what are you talking about? Uh, this, you know, what's the function that you're doing? If you're building a data warehouse for your entire company, great, call it a data warehouse. Do not think though that that naming convention relates to that underlying technology, as I said, okay? Now we're only gonna have one of these. So once we create this, we're gonna attach it to uh, that data mark. That's gonna be in like the next video, okay? Uh, next item, we've got our semantic models. This is where we're gonna actually like get into our semantic model and we're gonna name that semantic model. Uh, ideally you have one for an environment, right? Like you can have one big semantic model and everything can go in there, especially with direct lake. It's really easy to have like really large models and not have to worry about like having to juggle or manage you know, sub models. But understand that's a, that's a hard thing for a lot of companies and teams to do and manage. So if you're gonna be creating multiple sub, uh, sub semantic models, we're gonna be using uh, like the domain is gonna be here, like the end to end, which is your, you know, like sales, right? Or finance or HR, right? Uh, and then the model named a descriptor, right? So this would be the sub name or model breakout from the main model, okay? And then the last piece that we're gonna have is our reports, all right? Now this fits uh, you know, right into like coming best practices where this is where we start to get into uh, and not adding anything more into the name than uh, just like what is a user gonna be consuming, right? So a user is gonna be coming in through a Power BI app to consume a report. So you're gonna have an app name that will be associated with the report as well as that uh, report name, right? Both of those should be business friendly in their naming con convention so that it's easy for users to access and, and, and consume that information. This is where we move away from including technical jar jargon inside of our naming conventions. It just really confuses end users. You can put that in your, your report details. You can do that in other places. Don't put that in the names, okay? All right. So. In our next video, we're gonna actually go through the whole build out of this stuff. Uh, excited to get into that with you guys, but trying to break this up into consumable chunks. If you found this useful, you like this content, hit that subscribe button, uh, turn on the alarm bell, leave a comment. Let me know what questions you got. Uh, you know, all the YouTube stuff, right? I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, and if you're finding this way too complex, oh, hey, look, I got my shirt on. Baker Tilly, we do consulting. So like hit me up on LinkedIn or head over to krasbi.com. I got like a button to get yourself a data guide. Uh, you know, go ahead, click on that, fill out the form uh, and myself or one of my associates will reach out to you right away and try to get you up and running as fast as possible. All right, you have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.